morning, everyone. So good to see you. Students, thank you for sticking around with me. I promise I will um, try not to be boring for you. Um, they had such an awesome time at camp. If you are a parent or a grandparent um, or family member of one of these amazing students, you need to ask them, what did God say to you at camp? What's he doing in your life? Um, you can ask them about the games and all that fun stuff too, but God moved miraculously in, this, in these kids and you're going to want to be here next week to hear their testimonies, okay? So next week, camp testimonies, please come out for that. Um, so this morning I'm wrapping up our series on the gifts of the Spirit. And Pastor Matt has done an amazing job, not just the past couple of weeks, but the past few months, we, if you've noticed, we've been on this trajectory. We talked about our foundations, reading the Bible, prayer, like what is all that for? What does all that mean? Um, if you want to, if you missed it, go back and catch that. Um, so important. So the foundations of our faith, why do we believe what we believe and what's it all for? And then we moved into the power of the Holy Spirit because what's that for? What, what does that have to do with us? And how do we use it? And is it for everybody? Is it just for some people? So we answered those questions. And then we moved into the gifts of the Spirit. Who, who gets those and, and what's that for? And so we're, we're learning all kinds of information, lots of God's truth from his word. And so today we're just gonna wrap up with what now? What do we do with what we've learned? What do we do with all this information that we've taken in? Because for some of us, this has been a great refresher, but for some, this is brand new information. And God wants to speak to all of us today about what do we do now? Now that we know what we know, what do we do with it? Students, you've been at camp all week. Well, for it felt like longer probably, but... Um, what do you do with what you learned? What do you do now that you're home? You probably already faced some things right when you pulled into your driveway um, yesterday when you got home from camp. So now that we know all these things, how, what do we do with them in real life? How do they actually inform how I live? So we're, one of the questions we're gonna answer, how does my faith inform how I live? Listen, if you feel like you're here on purpose today, if you feel like there's something that the Lord wants to share with you today, I encourage you to take out a notebook, take out the note app on your phone. You can silence everything else. But I do believe the Lord's gonna speak to you and it's not because I'm good, it's because he's good and he's faithful and he's already spoken to me about things that he's gonna tell you. So I wanna make sure that you're prepared so you can write them down. So most of us would say that our, how many of you would say like, my faith is the foundation of my life? Would you say that? You can raise your hand if you want to. Would you say like, yeah, like my faith, it's everything to me. It's important. Um, it's where I run <laughs> when I need help. Um, he's where I go to worship, to pray um, when I need something. If our faith really is the foundation of our life, and most of us would say that in this room, then everything in our lives should revolve around it. So as you've been receiving all this information the past couple of months, it can't just be things that we add to our current way of living. It's gonna be some things that begin to mess up the current way that we live because it starts to deal with some things of like, oh wait, how do I keep living this way now that I know this? If it's the most important part of our lives, everything should revolve around it. Think of some of the most serious uh, relationships that you entered into in your life and how much they changed your entire life. Think about maybe the first serious relationship you got into, and you're like, oh wow, this, this is changing things. This is different. I have to live differently. Think about when you got married. How much did that change your life? You didn't just be like, okay, we're married, so you're just gonna, you're just gonna keep going, doing what I'm doing. Nothing's gonna change about my life, but I'm just gonna add you to it. If that did happen in your marriage, that is not a good idea, and you need to go back and get some new premarital counseling. Maybe post, I don't know, marital counseling is what you called it at this point. Um, when you had kids, how much did that change your life? I mean, it reoriented everything. And I don't know if you were like us, we were so unprepared <laughs> for what that would do to our lives and how much it would uproot everything. You think you're just gonna like, you're like, oh, it's a baby. You just take them places. You just, they just go with you, right? And you're just gonna keep going and doing what you're doing. It's just like, oh yeah, it's just gonna be this little thing that's so cute and they're just gonna hang out with me. It changes 
Devin, I'm seeing you right now. She's just like, yes. It changes everything. You have to change your schedule. You have to reorganize your finances. Come on, somebody. Those babies can eat. The big babies eat, too. I've got a couple of those. And not that you guys are babies. Um, They change everything. A lot of you had to move. You're like, I thought this baby was just real little. We're just going to, like, put it right here. And it comes with all this stuff. How many of you, your first trip that you had to pack, and listen, this is true whether it's your own baby or like you're just an aunt or an uncle or somebody, you're like, oh my gosh, vacation is so different now that this baby's here, okay? Or even siblings, you, your parents had a baby, and you're just like, okay, everything is different now. Everything has changed. You have to bring so many things. You have to change everything. If you have a massive career change, if you, if you went from one career to a complete other career, um, students, you're going to experience this when you go to college. You're going to be you're going to be one type of student. Then you're going to move into a completely other type of student. Everything is going to change, everything. So, how much more important? How much more should our entire lives be reoriented? How much more should they be completely changed by this new way of thinking and living of following Jesus? And here's the thing: a lot of us, when we came to know the Lord as our Savior, We didn't go through this process. We just thought, kind of like with the baby, it's just like, okay, so I know Jesus, so grateful for him because I cannot do this life on my own. I need a savior. I need help. Like we acknowledged all of that. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you so much. Okay, Jesus, come alongside of me as I live my life. And I want you to just bless things, open up doors, and just do stuff for me, and be quiet when I don't want to hear from you, because I don't want to change that, so just be quiet about that. But Jesus, I need you, and I need you to do this, and I need you to do this. And we just had this idea, and listen, most of us wouldn't like have an active thought like that, but it is a lot of what we did. We were just like, right, Jesus, come along with me as I keep living my life. And all of these things that we've been learning about, the power of the Holy Spirit, his gifts, um, salvation, um, our relationship with him, they're not meant to just come alongside everything that we're already doing. They're meant to literally transform us, to change us from the inside out to the point where literally once you come to Christ, every single thing about your life should change. I'm not saying you ditch the kids and the spouse and all that kind of stuff, but everything about your priorities, everything about what you do, why you do it, how you do it should change. A lot of us, the demeanor on our face, it changes. How many of you know somebody, or maybe that was you, came to Jesus and you're like, they literally look like different people. It's as if something just lifted off of them And they are lighter. They are more friendly. (laughs) We're going to read in 2 Corinthians 5. Um, This is going to be kind of a a long reading, but it's so important um, as we've been talking about context because we're going to get to a verse at the end that's so familiar to all of us, but we want to know how we got there. But listen, everything about what the gospel provides for us is not so that we can have a sort of kind of better life than we had before. It's so that we can have a transformed life. All these gifts of the Spirit, it's not just so that we can like, oh, that's really cool. I know this about myself now. Or, oh, I'm able to pray in the Spirit. Or, oh, I'm able to do all of these things. Um, It's so that we can be transformed and so that we can live the way that Jesus did. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 18. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, We will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we put on heavenly bodies, we will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan inside. Come on, somebody. Anybody groan inside this morning in their earthly body? (laughs) But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself prepared us for this. As a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. He has prepared us for this. Listen, when you, I'm gonna pause for a second, but when you come to know Jesus, 
when you come into relationship with him. So it starts with acknowledging that he is real and that he died for you and that he made a way for you that you couldn't make for yourself. And then you grow in a relationship with him or maybe you get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and you just realize like you have this kind of discontent in this world because the things that used to fill you don't fill you any longer. The things that make, used to make you happy, they just don't make you happy like they used to. And you have this discontent. And then it's like, okay, God, how do I keep living here on earth knowing what I know and knowing what's available to me in heaven? He says, he gives us a guarantee. He gives us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not seeing, yet we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies than we would be at home in the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand before Christ and be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or the evil that we have done in these earthly bodies. So we still have purpose while we're in these earthly bodies. Wouldn't it be so nice if you just get saved and you just go straight to heaven and you don't have to deal with any of it? I think that would be awesome. I mean, I love y'all, but you're not heaven. So, and you're not Jesus. So I think that would be awesome, but he has a plan for our lives while we're here, and he says, listen, you're not going to have to go at it alone. It's going to feel like a lot. It's not a lot. You just need to be filled with my spirit so that you can hear what I want you to do and live the lives I've called you to live because I still have a purpose for you while you are here. And listen, we can choose to do good with that or evil. It's up to us. We can choose to live for him or to live for ourselves. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. We work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. Are we commending ourselves to you again? No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us so you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. Ouch. Let that sink in for a second. If it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. And listen, that was all of us. At one point, you thought of Christ from a human point of view, and now you see him completely different because you're in relationship with him. And that changes everything. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. Everything that has happened in us is for the purpose of reconciling others to Christ. Our salvation isn't just for us. It's great that we are forgiven and redeemed. Everything that happened to us, it's not just for ourselves. It's so that we can live the life that God has called us to live here on earth that literally points other people to Jesus. Did you know that literally by the way that you walk around in the world, people should be looking at you and say, I know that Jesus is real because I met Mike and Darla. I know it. They don't even have to know all about salvation and all those different things, but they would literally know, I know that Jesus is real because of the Jesus that I see displayed in them. And a lot of that comes from all these things that we've learned about. I know that I know y'all, would you say, I, I can act like that completely on my own. I am very good at just being humble and kind and loving. It's because you're filled with the Holy Spirit and people can tell when they are around you. Once we come into new life with Jesus, we are awakened to the new life in him and the things that are around us no longer satisfy. We start to long for the things of heaven, but listen, our job is not finished here. It's not finished. We have so much left to do. Listen, 
students, when you got home yesterday, you had a choice to make. Would everything that happened at camp, would it stay there? Or would it come home with you? And would it begin to inform how you live? There's going to be things that you have to change, things that you have to do, things that no longer are going to serve you well in your journey because now you know different. A lot of you were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you received your prayer language for the first time. Things are going to change. Things are going, some of you gave your life to Jesus for the very first time. Things are going to change, and they should. And listen, this is across the board for all of us. We have done a huge disservice as the American church by creating a more convenient way to follow Jesus. We've done a huge disservice, and it only happens here for the most part. Um, I think it's the strongest in, in the United States. We've created this really easy on-ramp to following Jesus. Oh, just say yes to him. Just say yes to him, and then he's going to make, he's just going to bless your life. And uh, nobody ever told you that you literally have to change everything. Everything. Everything now has to line up with how does this inform my faith? Or how does my faith inform this? How does it inform how I parent? How does it inform how I work? How does it inform my friendships? How does it inform how I spend my money? Nobody ever told us that we'd have to do a reorg with your finances. You have to wipe it all clean. Everything that you, whether it's your calendar, your finances, your relationships, there needs to be this moment where you lay it all before the Lord and, and, and you say, God, it's all up for change. It's all up for reconciliation with, with your word. And the things that don't line up, they got to go. They have to. Because if you want to live this life in the way that Jesus intended, there is no, I have read the word, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor John, I'm sure you've read it more than I have. Is there a, a way in scripture where it says, come and follow Jesus, you don't have to leave anything behind, you don't have to change anything about your life, he just wants to make you happy, he just wants to bless you, he wants to fill you with his spirit so that you can feel super tingly on Sunday mornings, but then you're going to go home and be the same person at home that you always were. Is there something like that in scripture that I missed? Because, listen, we have done a huge disservice. We said, hey, come follow, Jesus. come follow Jesus, continue in sexual immorality, that's fine. Come follow Jesus, continue to get drunk on the weekends, that's fine. He gives you special permission for that. Continue to follow Jesus and talk to your kids like a jerk. He's fine with that. Continue to follow Jesus and scroll on your phone for hours and numb out because you don't want to deal with your life and you don't want the Holy Spirit to deal with you about the things that are going on in your heart. Continue to follow Jesus and be in relationship with people that you know are no good for you. Continue to follow Jesus and use your words to speak death over your circumstances. I'm so sorry on behalf of the American church that we have allowed, and I hope this has never been true at Harvest, that we have allowed this way of thinking that you get to go back to everything that you used to do, and you think you're in relationship with Jesus because you prayed a prayer one time. It's just not true. It's not in scripture. I suggest you read it so you know that it's in there. That'd be a good idea. Listen, one of the main reasons that Christians stay in the infancy stage of their faith is because they never rebuilt their life around Jesus after they made a choice to follow him. And Christians that stay in the infancy stage, think about if your baby stayed in the infancy stage forever, whining, crying, dependent upon you for every little thing. You're like, come on, let's grow up. Let's get potty trained. Let's do some things. Let's eat something besides milk. I'm tired. Listen, and that's why the world looks at the church, a church filled with people who are in the infancy stage, and they're like, why would I ever want to be like that? Why would I ever want to follow this Jesus when I see people walking around who do not do what they say they believe, they make all kinds of excuses for themselves that they're still allowed to have the same attitude that they had because I'm just made this way. No, Christ has made you new. You gotta grow in that though. 
The old infrastructure of our lives cannot support the new life that we want in Christ. And the Holy Spirit told me, he said, the old infrastructure, it's got holes in it. It's got cracks in it. You cannot take what the Lord would want to do in your life. It's so big and it's so good. It's so much. It's not a list of rules. Listen, he gives us his spirit so that we can live here joyfully and with power and authority so that we don't have to walk through life like just, oh, I'm just trying to make it. I'm just trying to survive this Christian life. I can't wait till we get to heaven. Listen, scripture told us we should long for heaven. Honestly, I think there's something wrong. If you're a believer and you're not longing for heaven, you need to reevaluate because heaven is the promise but there's heaven available to us here on earth by the power of the Holy Spirit that's available for us to live our lives the way that he's actually called us to. And it shouldn't be daunting. It should be a joy. The joy of our salvation should be to walk around in this world to say, listen, the Holy Spirit lives in me and you need him. (laughs) I don't know how you're living your life without him. I don't know how you walk around in this world without him. But the Lord is not interested in a remodel. He wants a new construction. If given the choice, what would you take? Hey, go into this house. It's going to take years and years and years and years, and you're going to need to strip away, and you're going to need to do all these things. Listen, the Lord wants to wipe it. All things have passed away. All old things have passed away. Everything has become new. Your life is new. But listen, it's it's not like a magic wand. Don't you wish it was? Just like, boop, new you're not going to struggle anymore. We've been talking as a staff of how difficult it's been to undo this idea that like, when we say that God wants to bless us, it's just like, oh, more. He just wants to give us a bunch of money. He just wants to give us a big house. And he just wants to like make our life so happy and that we're never going to struggle. And he's going to, you know, make it so that nothing bad ever happens to us. That is a lie. That's not why Jesus came. Look at his life. Look at the life of the disciples around him. He promised them. He's like, you are going to struggle. You are going to have hard times. But let me tell you what, you are not alone. Because I have overcome the world. We walk around as if it's our responsibility to overcome the world. And he's already done it. He's already made a way. We literally walk with him in the ways that he has asked us to. And he will make a way for us by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not our responsibility. Listen, you are not strong enough. I am not strong enough. Our old infrastructure will not hold the new thing that the Lord wants to do in you and through you. And listen, for some of us, that's why God is not answering your prayer When you're asking, God, I want you to use me. I want you to do this through me. I want you to do this in my home, in my family, and in my kids. And he's going, you couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it if I gave it to you in the way that you are right now because he loves us too much. That's like asking somebody who has broken bones to carry something for you. Even if they're asking for it. I'll give it to me. I'll do it. I'll do it. No, you can't handle it right now. You can't handle it. And listen, what happens when we learn all these things is kind of this holy frustration because we we get to know more about God. We get to know more about his word. We go to camp. We realize there is a life available to us that is beyond anything that we could ever imagine on our own. And God is actually good enough to do it and faithful enough to do it and strong enough to do it. And then we go back to living exactly the way that we lived before. And we have this frustration because now we know what's available but yet we're not seeing it come to pass in our lives. And then we walk around in, in that infancy stage, just, oh God, why? Why? Crying, the infancy stage. And God's like, I want you to grow. I want you to spend time with me. I want you to get in my word. Listen, the Bible reading, the prayer time, being water baptized, being baptized in the spirit, receiving your prayer language, discovering your spiritual gifts, all of this is meant to help you live like Jesus while you are here on this earth. Because listen, Jesus was not just a great idea that we're following. You know, we kind of think about it as like, oh, Jesus, like kindness, love, all these things. Yes, he represents those things, but he's an actual person who lived an actual life. He was a rabbi. He was a teacher. And do you know what rabbis did back in the day? They sat under another rabbi. They learned 
About 30 years of age, they begin to go out on their own. They began to grab a group of disciples to follow them. They begin to teach out in the open air and teach their yoke or their burden, their way of viewing the scriptures. Does that sound familiar? Jesus wasn't the only one that did that. He was one of the rabbis, but he was the rabbi that was teaching a view of scripture that everybody was like, hold on a second. This is nothing like I've ever heard. And this guy's teaching with power and he's teaching with authority and he's teaching filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't understand what that is now, but that's what gave him the authority to do what he did because he came here as a human. He gave up his divinity. He came to earth. He was filled with the Holy Spirit since birth, which we are not. That would be awesome. But we are not not filled with that since birth. But he was able to then preach with power and authority. And he was able to interpret the scriptures in a way where people are like, hold on, this is nothing I've ever heard. Because he's not focusing on the rules. He's not focusing on the regulations. He's focusing on relationship with God. And I've never heard anything like that before. And it made people go like, he's, he's so different. And obviously he was different. He's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. He didn't come just to die for us though. He came to show us how to live. Yes, he came to die for us. I'm so grateful. And he rose again. But listen, while he was here, he literally modeled, this is how to live on this earth. That's why he came here as a human. He could have come here as a lot of other things. He came here as a human with our weakness, with all of that going on in him. And so he knows a lot of what we've been through. He knows grief. He knows pain. He knows sorrow. He knows tragedy. He knows hunger. He knows sadness. He lived in a way that we can actually follow. And he modeled it for us. The same spirit that lived in Jesus is available for us today. That's what we've been learning about this whole time. I'm just trying to connect the dots for you so that you don't go through hearing all of these things and think like, okay, cool. I'm gonna add that into my toolbox. I'm gonna add that into everything that I'm already doing because the Lord says that's not gonna work. And listen, if you have looked around you recently, our world is a crazy place. It's not the only time it's been a crazy place, but it's a crazy place right now. And if you are not filled with his spirit, if you are not walking a path, that straight and narrow path that he led out for you, because listen, remember our salvation is not just about us. It's so that other people can look at us and know that there is a savior, that there is someone who loves them. And it's going to be the way that we live our lives with power and authority, um, knowing all of the gifts that are available to us that draw other people unto him. And that's what's going to be different. I don't care if it's different about everybody else, but the people here, it's going to be different about us. It's going to be different about us. We are going to actually live the things that God has taught us to live. We're no longer going to make excuses for habitual sin. It is normal that you should still struggle after you come to know Jesus. You're not going to be perfect I struggle daily. That's why I pray. That's why I read his word because I need the mind of Christ. Trust me, you don't want Sarah's mind up in here. You don't want my personality up in here. You don't want my way of viewing the world up in here. You need me to be spending time with the Lord. You need Matt to be spending time with the Lord, being filled with the Spirit. You need Josh to be spending time with the Lord, being filled with the Spirit. And it's not because we're pastors. You need to be spending time with the Lord. You need to be filled with his spirit on a daily basis. You need to be opening up your life to him to say, God, I don't know if I ever did this, but I'm laying it all on the table. Is this the job that I should have? Is this the way I should be raising my children? Is this the way I should be spending my money? Does my life reflect generosity? And I'm gonna, I don't have it up here with me, but listen, the biggest test, this is what I want you to go home and do. Don't do it right now. Go home, open up your phone. Your phone is your life, you realize that. Everything in your phone reflects your life. I want you to look through text messages that you've been sending and receiving. I want you to look through your news feed on your preferred social media, the things that you post, the things that you like, the jokes that you laugh at, all of those things. If that's not reflecting Jesus, there needs to be a reorganization happening. And I'm not saying there's no room for weakness. 
But if you don't like how you're treating your spouse, if you don't like how you're treating your kids, if you're, if you're a child who this has not transformed into respect for your parents or into authorities, or you still got the same stuff going, listen, aren't you tired of going around the same thing all the time, thinking that that's just going to be how you have to live? That is not the freedom that Christ has made available to you. It's not, and it is not supposed to be how you're living. And if you are struggling and you do feel like you've done everything you can, please go speak with somebody. Please come talk to one of us. Let us pray with you. But God has not sanctioned these things just for you to be able to do, just keep on doing and keep living this life that is so heavy. He wants us freed up to live for him. He wants us freed up to be doing the things that he's called us to do. Listen, the things he's called you guys to do, the things that he's called me to do, it's so exciting. That's why he doesn't come with all of these rules. That's why his yoke, his burden, his way of interpreting the scripture was not filled with all of that. And you gotta do this and for sure do this and definitely don't do this. And all he's just like, I am concerned about your heart. Because if he knew, if I could get your heart right, everything else flows from it. Everything else flows from it. So if you, it's not this big, giant, hairy thing. It's this one thing, but it's a big thing. He wants your heart. He wants your heart, and he wants you to make space for him to move. I knew that I would be um, wrapping up this series, and I've been praying for weeks. Okay, Lord, how do you want me to wrap this up? And... Um, a lot of nothing. <laughs> hey, God, what do you want to do? How are you going to wrap this up? A lot of nothing. And then he began to speak with me. He said, tell them what to do with everything they've learned so far. I was like, okay. Okay. In one sermon, here's how to use all your gifts. Here's how to do all these things. But then we were, this week, it never fails. Every time I'm asked to preach, We'll look at the calendar, we'll be like, this seems like a good time, and then just, just stuff begins to fill the week. Physical stuff, scheduling things, meetings, things that were not supposed to be planned are planned, and all of a sudden, it's like, okay, God, you do remember I have to preach on Sunday. You remember that part? Happy to do what you've asked me to do, but I do have something that, that I need to do, and, and it's just such a good reminder that the Holy Spirit is so real and so tangible, and he really does help us with all the things that he's called us to do. So I was sitting at the back of the gym at camp on Friday night, and I had actually considered not going because I was like, God, maybe it would be more responsible for me to stay home and write this sermon <laughs> that I know I'm going to preach on Sunday. But Matt and I love to go to camp, even if it's just to get a glimpse of what's going on with our students, what's going on with our kids, because there is an openness at camp that you just cannot find almost anywhere else in the world. It's precious. It's holy. It's set apart. And so I'm sitting at the back of the gym, and the presence of the Lord is just so tangible. It's so heavy and so good, like fog, just filling the room. It was so sweet. And watching our students worship and pray and minister to one another. And I sat at the back of the room on the gym floor, the very dirty gym floor, by the way. And I'm just on my knees and I'm just weeping before the Lord, just with gratitude. I'm like, God, you're so good. Your presence is so good. You're so faithful to us. You're so kind. You're so real. Thank you for ministering to our students. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives. And as loud as I can describe without it being an audible voice, the Holy Spirit says, this is what it looks like when you make room for me to move. Camp's not special as far as a place. Camp is special because these students made a decision. They set aside the time. I don't know how happy they were, but they didn't have their phones a lot of the time. But it left them without distractions. They were inundated with the word. They were open to what the Holy Spirit would want to do. And so he moved. That's how it works. And that's how it works for us. 
We set aside time. We rearrange schedules. We rearrange calendars. We rearrange finances. We rearrange anything that could be keeping us from living the life that he's called us to live. And we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come have your way. Do the things that you want to do. Lord, these are the things that I need. These are the things that I need help with. These are the things that I need delivered from. And I, I want you to do it. And then he does it. So listen, today, we're going to make room. We're going to make room for what it is that the Lord would want to do in us and through us. And listen, in my flesh, I did not want to preach this word to you today. Because I know that it feels like a lot. And I was like, God, I don't want this to feel heavy. I want this to feel like freedom. Because that's what this is about. Your life in Christ is supposed to be the most freed up life that is possible. But if you stay tethered to all the things of this world that you really feel like you cannot give up, the things of this world that you really feel like, God, I, do you know what it would take? Do you know what it would take to do that? Do you know what it would take to tear all of that down, to reorganize that, to rebuild that? Do you know what it would take? And he's going, I, I do know. I do know, and I will be with you, and I will empower you to do the things that I've asked you to do. You're not going to be alone. You're not going to be alone. But listen, for some of y'all, today is the day. You have been circling the same things, and you already know what they are because I've been praying for you. You already know there are things that no longer belong in your life. Students, I've been praying for you. You know there are things that are not serving you well. There are relationships not serving you well. There are habits that are no longer serving you well. And the things that God has called you to are beyond amazing. These are gonna be world changers. They already are. But how, but how can we ask them to live to a standard that we as adults, we are not even leading the way? So listen, if you have a student that went to camp, if you have a grandkid that went to camp, your home better be a place where their newfound fire faith should be able to flourish. They shouldn't come home to parents who are not spending time with Jesus. They should not come home to watching movies that are just displayed in the home that have no business being there. They shouldn't come home to music that should not be playing in that house. They shouldn't come on. I am not talking about rules and religion. I am talking about cultivating a faith that we can actually stand on. I'm talking about cultivating a faith that actually can bear the weight of the calling that is on your lives because God is good and he is faithful to do everything that he has called you to do. He's faithful to do it. Would we be faithful though? Would we be faithful? Some things have got to go. And I don't hear that from an angry father. I hear it from a grieved father. He's like, some things have got to go. No more. No more circling the same mindsets. That's one of the things he told me specifically. A lot of what this is going to be is changing your mindset. You have such a specific way that you have decided God can move and the ways he cannot move. And you're going to have to break that. And you're going to feel so free. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. So Pastor Josh is going to lead us in the song, Make Room. Because this song says everything that we want to pray in this area. So I made it real easy for you. You don't even have to come up with your own prayer. <laughs> this song is a prayer to the Lord, an invitation to say, Lord, I want to make room for you. I want to give you space to move. I want to give you authority in my life. I don't want, Matt talks about this all the time. We love Jesus as Savior, but we really do not like him as our Lord because that's when things get serious. He begins to tell us what to do, what to move. But listen, it's actually such a gift to us. We don't have to figure it out on our own. He tells us. He ministers to us. He explains it. But our responsibility is response. So would you make room this morning? Would you stand with me, please? Would you close your eyes and bow your heads so that you can be focused?
Listen, all around this place, I don't care where you're serving, close your eyes, bow your heads. I don't think anything's gonna happen right in this moment that needs your attention, except for this. Listen, if you are tired of having the highs at camp and then the lows when you get home, if you haven't done it already, invite the Lord to show you what needs to go what needs to change, what needs to be submitted to him so that you can accomplish the things that he's created you for and they will not feel heavy. Adults, if you are tired of circling the same things over and over again, the same mindsets, the same insecurities, the same habits, the same addictions, the same sins that you're just like, God, I just wanna be rid of this, I wanna be rid of this. And he's saying, give me space to move and get rid of it. If you're ready to just give him your whole heart, maybe you realize that there's things that you have been holding back from him that you've just said, God, I love the idea of living wholehearted for you. I just don't know if I can do what it takes to get there. He wants to remind you that he is with you and he is for you and it's gonna be by his power and not yours. If you're somebody who would just say, I have grown stale in my faith, I'm being honest. I've grown stagnant, I've grown tired, I've grown weary, I've allowed the weight of this world to just rest on me. Maybe you're living in unforgiveness. Maybe you're living in a constant state of stress. Maybe your schedule has so little margin in it, you don't even have time to think about it. And the Lord would say, I want you to give me space this morning. So as he sings, I'm actually gonna invite you all. Those that want to come, you don't have to. But this is gonna be more of an individual praying on your own. This is gonna be you coming to the altar to lay down things, to sacrifice things. Say, God, I want everything that you have for me. I want it all because I know you're a good father and your gifts for me are good. If you are ready for that this morning, I'm gonna invite you to come as Pastor Josh begins to sing. Listen, if you feel like you just need to sit in your seat and have a moment, that's okay too. But listen, please do not leave here today with the same stuff that you walked in here with. Today is a a day of change, of transformation, of renewal, of revival. And for that, some things are gonna have to die so that new life can come. If that's you, go ahead and come on. Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender Shake up the 
the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better Lord, tear down the walls of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better better Oh, and shake down the crown of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Lord, your way is better And shake down the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my Thank you for those who have responded to your call this morning. I fully realize there are those sitting in seats that are feeling the exact same as those that are up here at the altars. Lord, I thank you for how you are moving and how you are working. Lord, I thank you for authentic transformation in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for lives that are being submitted to you. I thank you for hearts that are being opened to whatever it is that you want for them. Maybe for those who have sat here through all these different series and there is fear attached to allowing your Holy Spirit to do what you really want to do in them. God, I just pray that that fear would go in the name of Jesus. God, that there would just be this welcoming of, Lord, more of you is always good more of you open God that we would have open hearts open minds God to whatever it is that you want to do in us and through us however you want to use our lives Lord we are for it however it is that you want to use our gifts the gifts that you have given us to do the work that you've called us to we say Holy Spirit you are welcome in our minds and in our bodies it's not going to be something that we keep at bay or maybe even keep at church but it's allowed to ride with us in the car and it's allowed to walk with us into our workplaces and so that we can be the pure reflection of Jesus that everybody is so desperate to see God I thank you that you are revealing things to people things that have been dead and buried God dreams that seem like they were old and faded away God you're reviving them and bringing them back to life in Jesus name God I thank you that none of us have gone too far. I thank you that your grace is sufficient for us according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not according to our righteousness, not according to our glory, not according to our good works, but according to the grace of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that your forgiveness abounds, your grace abounds. You are not a rule keeper. You are concerned with our heart you are concerned with the state of our souls, not so that we can check off some sort of list of purity and righteousness, but so that we can accomplish the things that you've called us to do. And we can do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you for what has happened in our students and our leaders. God, I ask that you would continue to burn like fire in them. God, continue to grow them in their faith. Continue to minister to them. God, I thank you for the healings that took place. I thank you for the things that they were delivered from. I thank you for the ways that they learned how to pray and minister for each other. And God, I pray that we as adults, that we would see that and that we would be inspired that we would be reminded and even convicted to live the lives that we are called to live. God, no more adding you in. No more just making a little, scooting over and making a little space for you. But God, that we would allow you to come in and wreck all the stuff that we've built up on our own and say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? And I pray that that would be the heart and the posture of this church. 
Lord, what do you wanna do with Harvest? How do you wanna use us? How do you wanna minister in us and through us? Help us to always make space for you, Lord God. Break up the ground of our tradition. Break down the walls. All the things that we've built up, that we've decided this is church, this is religion, and we would say, no, your way is better. Your way is better, God, and we really can trust you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For those that want to continue to pray, you're more than welcome. We are going to have elders um, still up here to pray at the end of service, so you guys can go ahead and come up. One of our elders, one of our prayer team members. If you still need prayer for anything, please do not leave without praying with somebody or without telling them what God is doing in you. And listen, for those of you who knew, you know that there was a response today of like, God, he is, he's asking me to do some things. Do not keep it silent. Talk to someone about it. Talk to a trusted friend. Talk to one of us pastors. Say like, I know God's asking me to change some things. Would you, would you pray with me? Because you are not in this alone. I'm not sure who's closing. I think Matt's gonna close, but listen, I love y'all. I hope you heard my heart this morning, but more importantly, I hope you heard the heart of the Lord. Amen.